I'm Brad Lewis, and you're looking at this because you're interested in some, getting some information about soluble C5B through 9. First question is, why do you want to know about this? And very likely, it's either that you're monitoring the, a drug effect that uh, suppresses the complement cascade, or perhaps you're trying to confirm a diagnosis where there is no other good diagnostic test, so you're interested in having one that's really a bit of a murky test. So first, what is soluble C5B9? And it goes back to the complement cascade which is a three-part cascade, you trigger it in multiple ways. You activate your C3, ultimately you activate C5. That C5 that you've activated then can become C5A, which is a, uh, activates cytokines, or it can become C5B. The C5B on the surface of a, of a cell is able to put together a bundle of straws that are then able to punch a hole through this membrane. This bundle of straws is called C5B through 9. It's C5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, not surprisingly. The more active, active your complement cascade is, the higher your C5B9 activation or production will be. We, for this assay, don't measure the C5B through 9 on the surface of a cell. We actually measure the soluble C5B through 9, because it's easier to do is really a lot of the reason that we do that. Um, why might you be doing this? A couple of reasons. One is you may be trying to monitor the effect of a drug that blocks C5, such as eculizumab or Eltamiris, or some of the newer drugs that are coming out. Any of those drugs should almost completely suppress the production of the soluble C5B through 9. You may be trying to use this to make a diagnosis of a disease like atypical HUS. Not a great test for that. You can get more information by going to Blood, Sweat, and Smears. The link is actually uh, below this uh, little blurb. Um, you can find out a bit more about how to think about TMAs. This is not a direct diagnostic test for atypical HUS. There may be a test like, like that coming out somewhere down the road, but there is, it, this test is not that test at this point in time. Um, on the other hand, the soluble C5B through 9 is particularly high in patients with atypical HUS, typically higher than in those patients with TTP, for example, or sepsis or other disorders which could look like atypical HUS, but don't activate the complement cascade as much. Um, nonetheless, it's not good enough. So although it's a very sensitive test, perhaps 100% sensitive for atypical HUS, the specificity in differentiating it from things like TTP is relatively low, perhaps in the 25 to 30% uh, range. So it's not useful as a diagnostic test. It may be useful if it were to come back normal as a way of ruling out atypical HUS, although that not, has not really been fully studied. But again, if you're looking into this test, it's probably because you're a bit confused about this patient at this point in time, and any additional information would be of some value. Um, the other re situation in which you might want to turn to this, as I mentioned, is, is in monitoring the drug. If you have somebody on the drug, it should fully suppress it. If it's not fully suppressed, then this suggests that perhaps more drug is needed or there's something uh, particularly driving it or perhaps a resistance to the drug, which is very, very rare at this point in time. Um, and with that, uh, if you want more information, please go to Blood, Sweat, and Smears, where you can find information on TMAs and how to diagnose them, and soon uh, information on uh, C5B through 9 in much more detail.